From Tobacco Republic in Loomis, California, the Loomis Cigar Cartel presents Beyond the Humidor, a cigar podcast for the rest of us. Well, good Monday evening, everybody. It is uh, the 7th of October, something like that. And you notice we're missing somebody, so I'm joined by two of my favorite cohorts. The other one's missing. How's everything going, Larry? Ah, so far, so good. You know, start of another week. Yeah, <laughs> amen to that one. Gorilla, how's everything going? The gorilla is good. Things are proceeding as expected. Ah, was there potentially go unexpectedly uh, wrong? Always. No, just a lot. Yeah. It's, as remember, remember, like three months ago, and Gorilla said like he's gonna have like a busy couple weeks. It's three months later, and we're still having a busy couple weeks. So you know. I just want to set my teeth on fire. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, you've picked the right thing to do that with. A cigar. Yes, yes. What are we, what are we all smoking? Uh, Scott's good. not here, so clearly we aren't drinking. We're not drinking, no. Um, Larry, why don't you know you got information Scott, on yours Scott's yet? fine, by the way. Yeah, yeah Scott yeah, is fine. Yeah, he just he, had something to hurt. do. Yeah, you just had other, other things to occupy his person this evening. Yes. By the way, the ransom is still the same if you're listening. Yeah. Scott's fine for now. <laughs> That's unrelated. Continue. Oh. Yikes. Well, I'm sorry. What was your question, sir? What are you smoking today? Uh, I was provided something from the proprietor of this fine establishment that we record at. Uh, it is a Aganorsa Leaf Anniversario. That's it, a nice stick. It is a uh, box press Toro at six and a quarter by fifty-two Nicaraguan, um, with an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper and a Nicaraguan Criollo 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 ninety-eight <laughs> uh, binder filler is also uh, uh, Nicaraguan Criollo. That sounds pretty good. I um, like that brand. Yeah, I this is the first time I've ever had this. It's um, uh, it's a little thicker than your typical box box press. Um, which if you've listened to the program before, you know I am not the box press is not my favorite. Although I do smoke a few, um, that's not my go to. This uh, I lit this up about a half an hour ago when I got here. And very earthy, very cedar, very, um, I think it's, he said it's a, a medium to full. Uh, I would go probably closer to the medium uh, range of that than full, but uh, very creamy, but just nice, nice, thick smoke. I'm really enjoying this. Yeah. And I'm surprised I haven't had something from this line before, but... Uh, um, you know, Ron walked out there today and said, Hey, what are you thinking? And I said, yeah, I don't know. What do you got in medium to full? And he did that kind of head tilt, you know, the buzzard to the left and, uh, you know, scratched his, uh, his little, uh, cube shaped dome there. And uh, next thing I know he came out with this and, uh, no, I'm very impressed. This is a very nice cigar. I like a lot of that line. Uh, Terrence Riley is one of the vice presidents of the company and he's got just it's a killer line, and uh, it's nice that we have it because for a while the only place I could find it was the free state of Idaho. As I just drop my ash on the floor. Uh, it's okay, and I'll kick, can cut that out. I'll kick that under the chair later. Yeah. Zoom and enhance. Yes. Uh, Gorilla, how about you? I decided to go with the leaf by Oscar Sumatra. I am a lazy piece of shit and didn't Google anything about this. I just knew I hadn't had one in a while, and they're really, 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 really good. Yes, they are. So that's the that's why the choice today. I think that's my my favorite in the in the Leaf series from Oscar mm. is the Sumatra. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're all good. The Connecticut's really light. The Sumatra is the Sumatra is that perfect middle ground i think because the the maduro is a maduro and the is it corojo or Cor is yes. corojo uh -huh. yeah corojo is depending on who you are what your day's been like as far as palate goes it might be a little too the corojo is a good uh a good beer mm -hmm. with a beer cigar um i think that is one of my favorite sunday morning with a coffee cigars this one yes 
Yeah, the Sumatra is, you have a nice, dark uh, Colombian or, or something, you know, coffee. Um, that even the, uh, the Mexican uh, from Yard Dog uh, Coffee, shout out to Yard Dog Coffee if you're listening. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great pairing with that. And that's, uh, it was funny when you walked in and said that's what you'd picked out. I'm like, man, I haven't had one of those in a minute. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Greg, what about you? What do you got? I went with the uh, CLE Corojo in the 1118 size. It's, you know, it's one of my go-tos. Uh, you know, when you have a pretty crappy day, I just tend to go to something that's known and it's what I like. So uh, this one is a, um, obviously it's a Corojo wrapper. I did look it up. Unfortunately, the thing I pulled up does not give me the, the details. So y'all have Google uh, Google that and you'll find it. It was, uh, but it's one of my regulars and I love the 1118 size. It's sort of a tapered traditional. When you see a cigar logo, an old school cigar logo, that's the traditional shape hmm. versus the, the modern Vitola. So it's been a minute since we were with everybody. Um, got some new news that came out today, uh, came out last few weeks and, uh, want to start off with my cigar weekend that we had. You know, I flew out Wednesday to Idaho, um, saw my barber. Yes, I fly 550 miles to see my barber. When, so when do you get your dual citizenship? You know, it's funny you say that. I've, I've, I, I, At this point, if you did the math, you might be over the minimum threshold of percentage of your time in this. <laughs> Honestly. True, true. Uh, but uh, we had a couple great events. We had uh, the Vault Eagle, which is over in Eagle, Idaho, of course. They did a, a comedy night, and uh, they actually had a stand-up come in, and they packed a boatload of people in that place. And I'll tell you. Okay, hold on. Stop right there for a second. Stopping right there. Did, did they pack a boatload of people in this place because it's a great venue for comedy and things like that because there's not shit to do in eagle idaho which is it yes yes <laughs> okay <laughs> just, to be fair, just to be fair i mean i'm trying to give some of our listeners from outside the idaho area a little perspective on what uh, what, we're, what we're dealing with well let me put it to you this way if you look at the treasure valley as a whole eagles where the money is i've been there that says a lot yes yes so um, the comic was uh, an interesting fellow, um, English-born American citizen, actually lives in the Boise area. Uh, his name is Ian Stanley. And if you guys want to see his shtick, it's pretty entertaining. I am not going to say the name of the program on YouTube, but Gorilla is going to put it right here on the video for you to look up. There will also be a link in um, the description to look it up. You know, it was a good guy. He's got some great jokes. Uh, we needed Scott there that night to be picked on. Um, you know, like any good stand-up, he picked on the audience, even when the audience volunteered themselves in one case. But, nice. uh, I mean, it was a good set. I, you may find this difficult to believe, Larry, but that was the first time I've ever seen live stand-up. Really? In my 41 years walking this earth. and As, as opposed to, you know, looking out the, the glass at the... Uh, uh, at the habitat you work out of uh, every day, huh? True. Oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. True. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know how true that can be. Yeah. No, I, I, <laughs> ooh, I got a pretty good idea. I have shopped at your establishment, sir. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, it was just, it was entertaining because, you know, the room looked like they enjoyed it. He certainly had a good time. Um, and most importantly, I got to smoke through the whole event. You know, it's a cigar lounge. You know, things like that. Living in California, we, you know, I I was going to say take for granted, but, uh, you know, if you've been here and lived here and you can't even take it for granted if you've never experienced it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, there's, we can't barely do anything in California with a cigar, you know? It's getting to the point where we're going to have to hide in our own, uh, our own house to smoke but uh yeah it was funny um i remember the first time i was out of the state 
uh, for work doing something. And uh, we were we were having dinner, and the two guys at the table next to us lit cigars at the dinner table, and they're smoking and eating. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is the greatest thing in the world, you know. I'm like, uh, I wish I'd have brought a cigar. Well, our waiter heard that and's like, I'm sorry, sir, I wasn't aware you needed to see the selection of cigars we offer. I'm like, oh God, welcome to America. Hang on, <laughs> hold. Smoking and eating in tandem, or eating then smoking afterwards? No, these two, these two guys were eating a steak and, and smoking a cigar. Nah, that's gotta I, be the I greatest thing ever. I I I don't get the eating while you smoke. I get after or smoking after you eat, but like munch, 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 puff, munch. Like I don't know that that breaks me a little bit. I don't like that. Well, you're just, something about uh, that feels wrong. Well, yeah. Have you tried it? No, but okay, I don't well, know that I want to. Well, the, o- the only place that I could have recommended him to go and try it got their pee pee slapped by the state, and you can't do that anymore. It's ridiculous, you know. Uh, but I mean, it was a good night. I mean, the place was packed, the smoke was thick, cigars were good. That's you know? awesome. Sounds like a fun event. It was fun. Now, now is this going to be an annual thing they do, or is this just kind of something they? Out of the blue, came up with an idea? What, what, I think it was probably that? out of the blue. I hope it becomes a regular thing because, like I said, it was fun. Um, but, you know, they're just trying to do some different things. They do live music on the weekends, uh, you know. So, And the, the nice thing about that lounge is they open at 10, and they stay open um, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They stay open until like 11 o'clock at night. Now, they have a bar? Full bar. That's what I thought. I couldn't remember if that was the one with a full bar or not. Mm-hmm. So. Yes. The other entertaining thing was on Saturday, which was the actual reason to go up there. The the comic uh, event at the Vault Eagle me- became a last minute thing. Mm. But the actual reason to go up there was it was the uh, fourth anniversary of V Cut opening. That's in Nampa, Idaho. V Cut is, of course, owned by Tim and Jennifer. Uh, they are two awesome individuals. And uh, I will get the picture to Gorilla so he can put it up for you. For those of you that watch us on YouTube, for those of you that don't, switch to the YouTube channel. Then you can see our faces, lovely as they are. <laughs> um, and I got to do a shout out to his, uh, Zach Mallory. He was the, normally he's their tobacconist, but he was behind the bar the whole time. And he was hopping, humping drinks like nobody's business, everything you want under the sun. He was a busy man, but uh, he was kind enough to save me a couple of cigars from the Black Label event uh, to try, and uh, our good friend Tommy, of course, saved me a couple more that I couldn't get a hold of, so I've got those for later on, but the best thing about this was uh, for the anniversary party, they had three of our favorite people. They've all been guests on the program. Matt Sass with my father, and Brandon and Kendrick with Apostate were there. Awesome. Premiering seven and eight, uh, Maroney's Trumpet and um, The Endowment. And we'll get into the blends of those in the news section. So, I mean, it was, it was amazing. Long Ash Contest, which was uh, the winner. Three-way winner. Four-way winner, technically. Figure this out, okay? The longest ash created was Tommy at 9 centime- 9.25 centimeters. Okay. They initially stopped the contest with... Uh, our buddy Nick and our buddy Will Arnold winning, both each at eight and a half centimeters. Uh, Will was smoking a My Father, and Nick was smoking a Feathered Serpent. And you should have seen Brandon and Kendrick freaking <laughs> busting a nut over the amount of ash that was holding on this Feathered Serpent. Oh. Actually, and, I, I've smoked quite a few of those, and those will carry an ash pretty well. Yeah. Uh, Nick, just so you know, Getting excited that it's 8.5 in centimeters, dude, is only three and a half inches. I was about to say, can we put that in like eagle feathers per Big Macs or whatever we measure in over here? Yes. Yeah. Three and a half inches. Thank you. Anyway. Insert, what the fuck is a kilometer clip here? Right. Now, <laughs> here was one of the coolest things, okay? Our buddy John Souter. Got to give a shout out to John. 
he pulled off eight centimeters. But what was amazing is he took his cigar from the vertical position, 90 degrees laying flat, and that eight centimeter ash held. Did not Wee. fall. It was really cool. Now, it's a party, right? Here it comes. Would you expect food? I would hope so. I would too. Hey, hey, I, I don't want... I, this is going to sound rude. Probably because it's rude. But, okay. Um, dude, I'm 290 pounds. Everywhere I go, I expect food. <laughs> Just saying. He's a little pissed there's not a charcuterie board here now. <laughs> That's true. What would you say if I told you that it was a crepe truck? I would say it goes right along with the English comic from the night before. <laughs> I know. No, dude, trust me. Picture a crepe stuffed with your favorite things, and it's, I kid you not, four inches in diameter of a cone of product. This was the one I ordered, so shout I need, out. I, I need you to get more. Thank you. Sorry, I'm interrupting, but you need to get more specific. Just a cone of product sounds nice. I have the menu here so we great. can have the menu here so we can go over a few of them. But so shout out to Cosmic Crepe. If you're in the uh, Idaho Lower Treasure Valley area and you want a food truck to come out for your event, these guys are freaking cool. They come out dressed as pirates. Jesus. In a in a truck that looks like the freaking Horsehead Nebula. It's amazing. I ordered the savory menu. I ordered the shaved steak crepe. So it's thinly shaved steak cooked with caramelized onions, butter, jack, uh, cheddar and jack cheese, fried sweet onion, cilantro, and ranch. And they put potato chips, a few potato chips in it for crunch. Talk about a French taco on steroids. It was great. <laughs> Go ahead, Larry. I, I got nothing. Somewhere there's a French chef rolling in his grave at yeah. that description. Jacques Pepin what did would, you do to my clips? Jacques Pepin would probably kill me. Um, but um, they have a chopped chicken one, which is turmeric, ginger, chicken breast, apple cider, vinegar, marinade, grilled jack, uh, cheddar again, fried sweet onion, cilantro, and topped with ranch dressing. Uh, a veggie walnut, which we won't discuss. No, no, no. And a Mediterranean Odyssey, which also... Eh. Now let's talk dessert. Because dessert crepes too, right? How about a Solar S'mores, which is uh, milky toasted marshmallows with chocolate uh, and graham crackers. Yeah, all right. The lemon Lunar Lemon was the one I had for dessert. Talk about a fat guy's wet dream. It's definitely fat guy approved. It was uh, lemon powdered sugar and uh, a cosmic glaze, as they call it, which was a sweet glaze. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> it was great. They also have a Nutella thing, if you're into Nutella. No, no, I would sooner <laughs> slam my you-know-what in a sliding glass door. <laughs> Nutella should be illegal. I agree with you. I do, too. I don't like hazelnut products. How did, how did Nutella hurt you? Point on this did, Nutella have jar. Have tried it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Banana, banana crepe, too, and a strawberry one. And they have the make-your-own crepe where you can choose from banana, strawberries, glaze, Bavarian cream, that item you don't like, dark chocolate, light chocolate, etc. Jesus. Hopefully next year we can plan it out so we can all get up there because Brandon and Kendrick and Matt will be up there again, so they say, and uh, the food will be off the hook. It was really good. This is on a, They're going to have this on a weekend? Typically it's a Friday. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. Assholes, make it a sad. So, I'm going to circle back. Hates Nutella, yet I have watched him put a bag of black licorice on like a feed bag. <laughs> and that boggles the mind. And not like Twizzler black licorice. Like Real some black old licorice. English man is making it from beating the whatever godforsaken witch's root you have to <laughs> extract the flavor from. <laughs> <laughs> in case you couldn't tell ladies and gentlemen uh the gorilla doesn't like black licorice no 
<laughs> you know, you know why I and I would imagine ninety percent of people you know, out there don't eat. Them. You know why I have an affinity for black licorice? Because because you're sad. Because you need help. Because neither you nor your two brothers liked it. It was the only way I got any kind of candy. Because you sons of bitches would shovel a bag of candy down in about four minutes. Yeah, this, and? Is, this is going to push me right into a rant. Oh no! Yeah. So the gorilla is is pushing thirty now. I got to say it like that, man. <laughs> Look at you. That was violent. So that was assault. That was yeah. verbal assault you just committed so, on camera. So if you if you back up, you know, 12, 10, 12, 14 years, gorilla is the oldest of my three. And when you're grocery shopping for three teenage boys, you might as well bring a dump truck. And I, I, I'll never forget, man, his younger brother was probably in eighth or ninth grade. We're at football practice, and one of the other parents walks up to me. And he goes, hey, can I ask you a question, man? I'm like, yeah, sure. He goes, do you really have a bicycle lock on your refrigerator? <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> Well, yeah, not the one in the house, but the one in the garage, yeah. He goes, I go, did you hear that from your kid? He goes, yeah. I go, oh, and it's true. He goes, why do you have a bicycle lock on your refrigerator? Because if I didn't, these jackasses would eat $200 worth of stuff in one afternoon. You know, box of corn dogs, box of frozen burritos, it, the, the three down, gallons of milk. The downside of taking the bus home from school and getting home two and a half hours before either of your parents get off work. Yeah. Is that it's just like, fuck, I guess we're grazing. <laughs> For two hours. Well, I think one of my favorite things is when you tell that story about how the lady at, at the grocery store lost her mind when you throw 12 gallons of milk on it the It was belt. only 10. In, in our defense, that was at the height of the Michelle Obama school lunch program. So <laughs> we oh, so you didn't we were, we were We were coming home famished. I see. But it's also a gallon of milk at dinner. Yeah, you know when it was when it was three of them. You know, and me and I, I like milk. You know, there's some things. It's some of the best ice cold glass of milk goes a long way. So. Is now a bad time to bring up the government cheese caves? <laughs> what Velveeta? No. No, no government cheese. Cave. We'll save that. We'll first. We'll have a government cheese cave episode. We'll do conspiracy theories part two. There we should we do go. that anyway. Conspiracies yeah. that are real. There we go. It's okay. I it was, I knocked you off your. No, uh, you're your, fine. You're your fine. I mean, that's great. There. I I was I, I was just thinking how funny this goes into the fan mail that we've got. Oh Christ! <laughs> <laughs> you get you gave me a highlight of this fan mail, and I don't really remember what you said. Shall we start with that one first? Uh, I don't know. We got more than one. Yes, we got two. No, nah, do the other one first. Other one first. Okay. This uh, email comes from Frank from Pennsylvania. It says, All, I told myself I wouldn't email you guys until I caught up with your current shows. I started listening to the podcast from episode one about a year ago, uh, or so ago. God help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus, man, what have you been on disability or some shit? What's going on, Frank? <laughs> I started smoking cigars around my 18th birthday, but slowly got away from the premium market as my wallet couldn't handle it. Oh, well, that makes sense. I switched to back <laughs> to backwoods. Yes, backwoods for many years due to cost. I would only buy the occasional good smoke for special occasions like my birthday or my two daughters' births. Congratulations when those were. Fast forward to two years ago, and I hit age forty-one, same age as I am, Frank. Child. I yes, I know. I finished writing my dissertation and got my uh, ED. My Ed D, I'm assuming that's a doctorate in education. If I'm wrong, Ed, uh, Frank, send us another email. And bought a cigar and thought to myself, what the hell am I spending money on shitty cigars? Is it just for the nicotine? I stopped, went back to premium cigars exclusively, and started more, uh, learning more about why I started smoking. The love of something that tastes good, not just the buzz. I'm a lover of good spirits, beer, food, and all things that taste good. You'll fit in with us very well, Frank. I read and listen to as much as I can about these topics, and you guys have really helped me jump back into my cigar journey. Jesus. I was going right. to say, anything on that one, Larry? I yeah, mean, well. He's listening to us. Oof. I don't know about that. Well, you know, hey, we, 
Any port in a listen, storm. Listening us to us is fine. Binging us nonstop for your may be hazardous to your health. Yeah. Very possibly. We're not responsible for the therapy bills, just so you know. Uh, it says, thanks for all the great info and for <laughs> the life of me. I can't figure out why you guys can't stand, uh, why you guys can stand being in California. Because uh, uh, we're in, not smart enough to get out of here yet. In fairness, much. the state's really pretty. Uh, yeah, the, the, <laughs> we have great weather most of the time. Um, you know, we're in the the northern part uh, of the state, so where we're at, Frank, it's two hours to the oceans, two hours to the mountains, to some of the best skiing in, in the western United States. There's all kinds of lakes, rivers. I mean, there's a ton of things to do. Um, and yeah, I mean that's it. We were, we were all born and raised here. Yep. Um, the economics and the political climate is driving a lot of us out of the state. Uh, so, you know, that's just kind of how it goes. And, and unless both of those two things that I just mentioned start to change rather rapidly, I don't see myself staying, you know, into my retirement years. If I ever get to those years, just from an economic standpoint, it just it it won't pencil out. It doesn't make sense. But uh, no, as far as you know, a place to visit. If you want to come out some, you know, and see some some nice scenery, um, the North Coast, Southern California is beautiful. The whole state is it's it's amazing. It's a it's an amazing state. I just wish it was a little more, you know, cost effective to live here. Yeah. So. That's it. That's all I got. Yep. Shout out to the gorilla, he continues to say. I love MASH. Is he he following the gorilla's podcast, too? You know, the gorilla's doing his thing. Best Care Anywhere. We just released today, uh, a week ago, if you're listening, uh, Season 3, Episode 6, Springtime. Ah, So if you want to see Jamie Farr in a sundress, go right ahead. Yes. He sees Jamie Farr in a lot of dresses, but I digress. Scott, who is not here, but nonetheless, he will probably watch this episode, so he will hear this. Scott, for his love of barbecue, I use a cam- uh, Camado. I don't know what that is, but we'll look it up. Larry makes me laugh every time I listen. And Greg, well, Greg, I hunt and feel your pain. Thank you. He also says, Scott, pay attention to this. Be nicer to me. Hmm. Be nicer to you or does... Be nicer to okay. me. I'm like, Frank, what has Scott mm-hmm. done to you that he needs to be nice for? Do we need to have an intervention? It's the harassing for hunting, most likely. Okay. He goes on to say, keep doing what you guys do and know there are people in PA listening. Good smoke, Frank. Frank, thank you. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you reaching out. Glad you're enjoying the, uh, the podcast. Now, <laughs> oh, where's Scott when we need him? This comes from James. James is local in Grass Valley. Uh-oh. I'm watching your most recent episode right now, 5.07 p.m., September 25th, as I work every day but Saturday and Sunday, 8.30 a.m., until the truck is empty, p.m. worker. I don't always get a chance to actually watch your podcast, but I save this one for vacation date. I'm assuming UPS, FedEx, something like that. Yeah, I hope not Amazon. God God You never know. I am not disappointed except in this. Ray Charles looking motherfucker with his sunglasses on the inside. <laughs> oh, the time has come. Shots fired. The day of reckoning is upon us. Don't get me wrong. I go inside with my sunglasses on to a business on a regular basis as a UPS driver. There's there our go. answer. <laughs> What's the point of taking off my glasses if I'm going to be in and out 30 seconds? Tell your wife I said hi. Okay. (laughs) I don't know what that means either. James, you need to clarify. (laughs) I don't know if you've ever heard uh, heard of Single Cast Nation, but I heard about them after I bought literally one of every single bottle of Hogback Distillery offerings. Thank you for supporting our friends. Thanks for the recommendation, by the way. I'm really enjoying the episode. I'm going to keep updating this as I go, but tell Scott to take his fucking glasses off. He's not that cool. Wow. (laughs) I'm not going to touch that at all. By the way, one of these days I will actually properly introduce myself since I've seen you guys at Tobacco Republic a couple of times. 
Oh, shit. <laughs> now I got to think about who. You know, if I talk to this guy. Oh, is that the guy you pissed off last week? Yeah. I well, saw I the, mean, that narrows it down. Yeah. I saw the gorilla at Lou Conter's funeral. Oh, I thought it might be this And on guy. a regular basis, I do watch the podcast on YouTube. Tomorrow, I'm leaving for the New England Cigar Expo, hosted and exclusively organized and promoted by twoguyscigars.com and the Cigar Authority podcast. Yeah. That's an event, James, that I hope one of these days to get to because it looks like a lot of fun. Anyway, this is getting long, and I know your listeners' mail selection is coming up, and you're going to plug your email address any minute now. Hope you guys are well. Feel free to reach out. James from Tales at the P, uh, Phoenix Cigar Lounge. P.S. Oh, random thought. You guys are close. You can come up to the lounge in Grass Valley if you want. Let me know, and we'll let you in. Keep up the great work. Talk to you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a lounge in Grass I Valley? Even, I have no I had idea. no idea there was a lounge in Grass Valley, and I have been, you know, up in that area, uh, Grass Valley Brewing Company. Uh, James, should we uh, should we meet at Grass Valley Brewing and then uh, maybe venture over to said lounge, sir? Now it is Grass Valley, so I'm going to ask: Is it strictly a cigar lounge? Yeah. Or uh, how much weed y'all selling? Are we hitting the hookah. <laughs> hey, I ain't scared. <laughs> the I, hashish. I, I will sit there and watch. Uh, you know, watch. Uh, Jam smoke a hookah. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I did I'm an equal. I, I'm an equal not, opportunity asshole. Did not imply that James is smoking the hookah, but you know, God bless. All right. Well, <laughs> well, that concludes the mail mail call for this week. If you would like to email us and have us uh, roast your email <laughs> on the podcast, feel free to email us. The email address is info i n f o at lumiscigarcartel dot com. Do drop us a line. Please understand, we're going to read it online, and you're going to hear from us. Hey, we appreciate everybody reaching out, man. Yes, Thank we you, do. Thank you, James. Thank you, Frank. Right, Frank? Frank. Frank, Fred. Frank from Pennsylvania. Frank from Pennsylvania. All right. On, on a side note, because I know we have fans all over the eastern seaboard, I hope you all, first of all, can hear us, and two, hope you're okay, because yeah, man, holy f- shit. Yeah, yeah, Florida getting hammered again, man. Well, because it went... Hit the panhandle and went north up the up the App- Appalachian Mountains, and then now there's one hit coming from the west. It's going to hit Tampa. It's like, yep, who yep. pissed on the hat of the village witch down there? Like, <laughs> who, 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 who stole who stole Mama Labatri's Amazon package from down in the bayou, and she sent forth a curse? Like, yep. in all seriousness, that some of the. Various other podcasts and YouTube videos I watch are from guys that live down there. Some of the some of the pic- pictures are just unbelievable, man. I mean, if you're if you're in that area, I we sincerely wish wish you our best. You know, please be safe. Get to somewhere safe as soon as you can. But also, some of the coolest, like, because I mean. We just said we live in California, so we don't know this firsthand, but like the the mountain folk community coming to like that pack mule company that's just fuck fuck all your res- reserved tours. Our pack mules are ferrying and food and drugs into these little communities and hollows that they can't get to right now. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Let's, let's go with food and medical supplies. <laughs> What'd I say? <laughs> food and drugs. drugs. Food and drugs. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, you know. I, I bet you fifty bucks one of those mules has an unmarked bottle of moonshine. Don't you dare think it doesn't. Yeah. I'm good with it. How'd you get your moonshine here, sir? By a mule. All right. Mm-hmm. I'll take two. <laughs> Did we? But we got people down there, you know. Uh, Don Moore, uh, our mm-hmm. buddy from uh, used to be our sales rep, uh, is down in uh, middle part of Florida, and over on uh, in the Fleming Island area is our good buddy Davy Dave. Oh, Davy Dave and Bree. I hope you guys are hope you guys are safe and on dry ground. Let's not forget Island Girls is over there in Fleming Island, Island, Island too. Is Fleming Island too. I got to send Davy Dave over to see them. Yes, you do. So, and by the way, Blaine, our good buddy Blaine, that oh, we all crazy, know and yeah, love, crazy, crazy used car Blaine. Crazy used car Blaine is in, I believe, the Naples area. So Blaine. When this new hurricane hits, do a live video, send it to us. We'll air it on the no, next podcast. Get out. Fuck Greg. Leave. <laughs> Leave. Blaine's just crazy enough to do Bl- it. You Blaine's know? the guy that's got himself strapped to a tree. <laughs> you know? It's, Storm surge is getting a little high, Blaine. You sure that's a good idea? Well, it's, what was that? Was that George Carlin's bit? 
Yeah, or whose bit was that? It's not that the wind is blowing, it's what the wind is blowing. <laughs> Did you get hit by a Volvo? <laughs> Jesus. But no, in all seriousness, man, I hope everybody's doing well down there. Robin Williams, hurricane came, took everything. It's going to be so hard to rebuild. Rebuild, get some fucking furniture that floats, moves up and down with the water. Goddamn. <laughs> Hope surely, you're all okay. Surely it won't happen again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's a crazy thing, okay? And Blaine said this here in the shop. He said, you know, I don't understand. You all are afraid of hurricanes out here. Out there, we're all afraid of earthquakes. And I went, an earthquake happens every 20, 25 years around that, a major one. Hurricanes happen every fucking year. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of when and where it the, hits. The difference is prep. Yeah. You get, you get a week's warning or so with a hurricane don't think i didn't think about loma prieta going across the bay bridge last week oh yeah no that kidding was, you weren't even alive when that happened true i was and we lived about three and a half miles from the san andreas fault and it Ooh. you could literally i kid you not you could watch the road on our street go like this it was amazing it went up and oscillated it was crazy but yeah never a dull moment no Earth. Earthquakes and forest fires, that's what we're famous for now, out here. Did we, I know that we don't normally do this on podcast, but I feel like some of them are too notable not to mention. Did we, the, the days are meshing for the gorilla. When, when we last recorded, had James Earl Jones and Maggie Smith and all them died yet? Or was that? No, no, that was the last week. Did the three that got me were James Earl Jones, Maggie Smith, and Chris Christopherson. Yes, like, don't forget Pete Rose also Pete went Rose, too. Pete Rose, yeah. Yep. And then Whitney Houston, I just saw today, Whitney Houston's mother, who was a singer as well, passed away today. We're going to do a little quick baseball rant. Okay, go for it. Fuck you, MLB, for not letting Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame. Fuck you. You're, the goddamn field he played at is named for a online betting operation now. Let that man in the Hall of Fame. Greatest player in the history of the sport. I'm done. Okay. Okay. But no. Oh, hello. Pardon me. Uh, no, James Earl Jones going was was shitty because obviously Darth Vader, but Gorilla's weird. Gorilla knows him as Admiral Greer from Hunt for Red October. I do too. Yep. Uh, motherfucker, stay. Gorilla's having technical difficulties with his microphone. Um, also, he's also in a bunch of other shit. I know. Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams. Yeah. And he was on the, the the stage production of Driving Miss Daisy. Yep. Uh, fuck. Uh, wait, am I getting baseball movies confused? He was in Field of Dreams, but he was also in fucking um, Sandlot, right? He's the he's the guy with the dog in Sandlot. Or am yes. I mixing up yes. my yes? Am I, I'm like fuck. Am I mixing up my black guys? No. That's a bad <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oops. Um, Joke's not as funny when Scott's not here. The voice of Mufasa. The yeah. voice of Mufasa, yes. Yeah, no, the man, man had a had a storied career, but uh, and it was it was funny. I remember when I first saw uh, Field of Dreams, and I'm like, "What? Well, how is he going to play?" And it just he could transcend himself into a role. I mean, he was just he was incredible. Mm -hmm. Very talented individual. Uh, Ethan and I had a good talk on our podcast for a minute about uh, Chris Christopherson because he's a big, you know, highwayman, that genre of music Ethan's really into. Uh, he and I came to the conclusion that even if you don't know it, you have a favorite Chris Christopherson song. He wrote so much music. Yeah. Well, and for, for other people, too. I mean, oh, no, that's what know, I'm saying. Yeah, like, it's... I honestly, it's a tie for me between Chris Christopherson's version of me and Bobby McGee and Janis Joplin's. Janis's is iconic, but Chris's is also really good. Um, Ethan, Ethan particularly loves uh, Sunday Morning Coming Down, mm -hmm. uh, written by Chris Christopherson, performed by him also, but mainly known by Johnny Cash. Mm -hmm. um, probably the least well-known of the Highwaymen, I would guess, Yes, by the average person. Yes. It was, it was Cash, Nelson... Jennings and Christofferson, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. yeah, no, my favorite of his is This Cowboy's Hat. Mm. That's a great song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> and then the, the millennial's going to get in here and Greg's going to get all flustered too. Dame Maggie Smith, Lady Maggie Smith. 
um, legend, legendary actor. I love, I have loved everything she has been in. Yes. The first thing I saw her in was the Harry Potter movies, but for those of you shaking your head, it made me want to go watch more of her stuff. Yeah. She is fantastic. Yeah. Well, she um, was in, in so many, you know, there was that, there was the Downton Abbey series, which go ahead, give me all the shit you want. It was a well-written series and she played an absolute aristocracy, aristocratical bitch she, with the greatest one-liners ever. I love her as the classy, sassy bitch. Mm-hmm. She's great. Um, I discovered, and I have to share this with the audience because it's so insane. She was in a movie called California Suite alongside Michael Caine, Alan Alda, Jane Fonda, Bill Cosby, Richard Pryor, Walter Matthau, and a bunch of... Dude, I need to watch this fucking movie. Clearly. What a fucking wild cast. Yes. But, no. It and well, Was that during an actor strike and they just <laughs> drug Don't everybody know. together? <laughs> It was in the 70s. I think yeah. was, I want to say it was like the bus 70. broke down somewhere and hey, all you guys were going to record this real quick. And then uh, she played Wendy in something with Robin Williams, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, in, in Hook. <clears throat> was it Hook? Yeah, I think Hook. at the end of Hook she's she's older Wendy. Yep. Yeah. And uh, then uh, something you probably have never seen her in, but uh, the original Death on the Nile with Peter Ustinoff, she plays one of the characters in that one. Man, there's too much films and not enough time. Oh, yeah. Isn't that the truth? But. but yeah. Well. How are we doing on the cigars? Great. Gorilla? Uh, it's a leaf by Oscar. What do you want me to? Like, good. Like, I got nothing more than that. Go try one if you haven't. Please remove the wrapper leaf. Not this wrapper leaf. The other wrapper leaf. You can smoke it. You'll look silly. Yeah, probably won't taste good either. You technically can also smoke the band. Yes, you can. Yep. How about you with the Aragonosa? Uh, this is uh, this is really good. I'm down to the last third. Um, it's a little bit tighter draw uh, on this uh, on this part of the cigar, but still very flavorful. Um, one more thing about you. technically, every band is smokable if you're <laughs> technically. <brave enough. laughs> yes, but, but the the ones on the leaf are actually designed that way. True. Uh, I mean, from my from my perspective, this CLE Corojo is a solid go to for me. It's all the time. So I mean, it's just good. Again, same thing with Gorilla. If you haven't tried it, go find you one. That that falls into the category of well, one of your comfort cigars. Yeah, you know that's going to be tried and true. So you know, if it's a if it's a day where hey man, I just got to have something to relax, then eh, that's a good one. That's actually a great topic for a future show. We need to talk about comfort cigars. Mm. Uh, yes. So let's talk the news. Oh, bum, bum, bum. oh shit. There's still news. There's still news. Apostate began shipping number seven and number eight of their core line. They're already in retail shops. Get yourself some. Let's talk first about number seven. It's the Maroni Trumpet size, six and a quarter by 56 torpedo. I'm going to talk to Larry directly because this is right in his passion. It is a a Scuro Mexican San Andreas wrapper around a Dominican Orlo binder and Connecticut broadleaf and Dominican filler. Oh, (laughs) bless you. I'm going to interrupt you because it finally happened. See, they're coming to get me. Ah. The audience can't hear it. There's sirens outside. Uh, No, the gorilla absolutely just ashed all over the road, which is, you know, a first. Oh, well. It's not on fire. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll Pour be fine. Pour a little water on it. It'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, number eight in their core line, the endowment, 6 by 52 Toro. It is an Ecuadorian Connecticut seed del Falorido Rapa around a Connecticut broadleaf binder, Dominican, Mexican, and Pennsylvanian filler. I have smoked them both. Maroni's Trumpet's flavor is lovely, rich, uh, great coffee undertones. Absolutely fabulous cigar. The endowment is... I would say now the lightest in their line, in my opinion. Brandon and Kinder can, of course, correct me if they believe otherwise. But it's a toss-up. That Liahona 
being their, one of their Connecticut's, and then the Endowment. Both are great light both cigars. The, both of these new cigars sound amazing. Yes, and I Brandon, can't wait to can't wait to try them. Brandon was nice enough to give me samples for everybody, so I've got those at the house for us to try. And you all don't have to wait, smoke them at your leisure, because Brandon said Tobacco Republic should see theirs in a week or two. Oh, look at that, Brandon! It's hard not to like you. And and I did go back and listen to the last time we had them on. We did know the names of them. They did share the the yeah. names and some more in depth description of why they're named what they are, why the blends are what they are, why they're sized and shaped the way they are. So yeehaw, heck yeah, we can always cut that in if you are so inclined. Uh, no, it's it's spread over about a half hour. So oh yeah, no, go, never mind. Go listen. Episode is appearing. I don't know on top of Greg's face or some shit. Click on it. Yeah. Premium Cigar Association received the Ambassador Award from Cigar Journal. The award recognizes PCA for their special achievements in promotion of a cigar culture at the 2024 Cigar Trophy Awards. These awards were held this year at Intertebex Conference in Dortmund, Germany. Another one that we have not smoked yet, but I'm going to wait until we get him on the program. West Tampa also won an award. They're a new brand. They've been out for a couple of years. Fabulous cigars. Um... You're going to have to smoke a Lancero when that happens because that's what he's sending us. Yeah, whatever. Toscano and PCA announced Toscano Brenta PCA exclusive. The Premium Cigar Association has partnered with Toscano Cigars to bring the member uh, bring its members new PCA release. The Toscano Brenta is the first tobacco blend to use tobacco that has undergone an air-cured process rather than its traditional fire-cured process. The Brenta blend has tobaccos that have been aged three to five years. After the scar is rolled, it is re-fermented in a special room that allows aging for an additional six months. Uh, it is composed entirely of Havana dark air-cured tobacco named uh, Nostrano del Brenta and aged anywhere between three and a half to five years. The mellow cigar presented in this company's unique conical shape with a ring gauge of 56 and a length of 4.14 inches. Nice little cigar. Complex flavor profile with walnuts and hazelnut notes, finishing with a delicate hint of wood. <laughs> anyway. And what else we got? Oh, uh, several. Okay. Blackwork Studio is pleased to announce the release of the Intergalactic Event Horizon. This one's right up Larry's alley. Uh, it is a new limited cigar that will begin shipping to select retailers this week. Mind you, that's last week, but nonetheless... Also available in Europe later this month, handcrafted at the Fabrica Oleva Negra in Esteli, Nicaragua. I'm sorry if I butchered that, folks, but I'm not even sure how to pronounce that one. Uh, we bring out the dark of intergalactic with Event Horizon. The Event Horizon is wrapped in a Pennsylvania broadleaf, which completely changes everything from the original 2022 Sumatra intergalactic. The cigar uh, is bold with flavors of dark fruit, raisin, earth, star anise. That might turn you off a bit because star anise is what gives black mm. licorice its flavor. Uh, the long finish is a mix of pepper and chili spice followed by a hint of sweetness. Event Horizon ex is extremely complex and very well balanced, says James Brown, creator of BLTC and partner at that uh, factory that I shall not butcher a second time. Wrapper is Pennsylvania Broadleaf, binder Ecuadorian Habano, filler Nicaraguan. Sounds good. Come, worth, it's, it's worth a try. I'm yeah. willing to try anything once, and yeah, it depends. It depends how star anise it is. Yeah, true. Comes well, in a robusto toro or petite corona. Ooh, that's almost a petite corona. I would think four four point seven five by forty six is their petite corona. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's the one. They're they're describing a lot of complex flavors. For those tobaccos. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd be interested in trying that for sure. Well, we do know a guy that knows where Blackworks is available, so we'll have to kindly ask him to uh, please purvey four of them for us. Um, our good friends at Fratello unveil their third in the Concealed Carry release, the Speak Easy. Mm. It is shipping starting October 3rd. That was three days ago. Uh, this small batch pays tribute to the hidden bars of the Prohibition era where like-minded people gathered in secret to enjoy cigars and spirits. The Speakeasy release is meant to capture that spirit of defiance and camaraderie, says Omar DeFria, CEO and founder of Fratello. Packaged in 12-count canister, there's a picture on the screen right now. I'll send all these pictures to Gorilla. 
Uh, MSRP is about $10 a cigar. They are 54 by 5.5. Uh, Robusto follows the same small batch limited edition format of the series. Like the other concealed carry blends, the mix is undisclosed, so I really don't know how to describe it for you. I don't even know if we can get a hold of those. And that, my friends, is the news for this episode. Cool, cool. Most excellent. Well, I got nothing. What about you? Gorilla? I got a boat boy update. Okay, do tell. So, so, so last week, well, a couple weeks ago, I got a message from uh, the girlfriend of boat boy saying, hey, do you want a ticket to a concert? I'm like, who? It's like, the longest Johns. This would be for those audience members that remember, which there should be none of you. You shouldn't be this interested in me. Um, a year ago, we went and saw a group called the Longest Johns in concert here in Roseville, and uh, Boat Boy's girlfriend figured, well, Zach's going to be going on a job here at the beginning of October, so before he leaves, let's go out and do something. So we all went down to the Great American Music Hall in, on O'Farrell Street in downtown San Francisco, which I get it, huh? San Francisco, homeless and poop. But <laughs> I you just killed our jokes, Larry. I, I, <laughs> but I say that because we came, we came over the Bay Bridge at sunset as the uh, city of San Francisco lights came on on the ferry terminal. Like it, I. San Francisco's got fucking problems. I still think it's a gorgeous city and it's a cool place to visit within reason. But the concert was really good. For those of you who are wondering, the Longest Johns are, in fact, known for sea shanties. So it was a very appropriate evening to spend with uh, Zach, a.k.a. Boat Boy. But uh, it was really cool. The The venue, I don't know how old it is. I don't know if it was part of the city, section of the city that burned Uh back in 1906 but it was cool old architecture it looked like an old like saloon theater or burlesque theater with all the ornate decorations and we got for a $30 ticket we got one hour of the uh preview the guy they were touring with named Cole McGinnis uh, if that name sounds familiar he's the deep vo voiced Irish guy who does covers of old Irish music and then we got almost two full hours of the longest Johns and the cool the cool thing to me about their concerts, it's any concert's cool to see live, but something about sea shanties, it's everyone there knew the words to all the songs. And there's something really cool of an entire auditorium of people singing Stan Rogers' um, Northwest Passage. Like, it's, it's, it's really fucking cool. It was a cool evening. Um, did... <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that aren't Son watching, of a bitch. no, they YouTube. heard it. They <laughs> no, heard that it. was that was the microphone breaking loose and falling onto the gorilla for the third time. For the third time, no, it's be because I'm fidgeting with the with the nut that's holding it in place, so it's yeah. all my fault. Um, Dumbass. No, it was it was a cool evening. So, uh, <laughs> Boat Boy just this Sunday, just yesterday, flew up on the state of Alaska's dime again to uh, basically sit in the chief engineer's cabin on a ferry while it sits in dock for two weeks and just sit there and be the person of record in case something happens. So God bless make making money, doing nothing sitting in the, uh, Kitchikan Harbor. You and I joined, pick the wrong <laughs> careers. No, I'm good. <laughs> the downside is he is missing fleet week and sailing with the O'Brien again uh, yeah. next weekend, but such is life. Uh, you know, it's tough to be the King. Yeah. Yes, it is. All right. Final thoughts, folks. Get yourself a CLE, Corojo. You won't be disappointed. Yep. Yep. Gorilla, what you got? Same. Try the try any of the Leaf by Oscar cigars. They're fantastic. Absolutely, and uh, really looking forward to the uh, the last two in the Apostate series of eight. Um, well, well, I got some news on that too. Brandon and Kendrick are leaving in a week or two back to the Dominican Republic to blend again. The eight line, the eight core line is done. Now it's time to start blending more and expand their core line. So there, there is more go. coming from apostate. Atta boy. I'm so excited. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, as always, you know, reach out to us. Let us know what you're doing, what you're thinking. Um, if you've got something, you know, in your area uh, that you've tried, you know, and you're not sure if we've heard about, we definitely want to hear about it one way or another. Let us know. 
Um, that goes for cigars, alcohol, craft beers, you know, auto parts. I mean, yeah, whatever, <laughs> you know, throw some shit out there. Let us, uh, let us know what you got. Absolutely. Uh, um, you can always reach us, uh, either through the Facebook page, through email. Um, you can reach one of those guys through Instagram. I don't know how to do that shit. So, yeah. You know, again, thanks for, uh, thanks for putting up with us, uh, again. And, uh, Smoke them if you got them. Well, it's definitely that time again. No alcohol tonight, no Scott. But he will be back on the next episode of Beyond the Humidor. My cigar is not down to the nub, but as always, we want to thank everybody for listening. On behalf of Larry the Gorilla and myself, thank you again. Check us out on Facebook at LumisCigarCartel.com. Also on Instagram, LumisCigarCartel.com. We are on YouTube at Luma Cigar Cartel. And by the way, the Twitter account is coming back. I just haven't got there yet. Gorilla and I have to converse upon that. God help us. I know. Please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. The address, once again, is info at LumaCigarCartel.com. As Scott would say, thanks for listening. Good smoke, good drink, and good life. Take care, everybody. <laughs>